So he called Sheriff Richard Mack and conferred with him. And he said, you know, what, what do we do about this situation? And Richard said, well, I'll help you write a letter. And so that letter basically went to um, the Department of Agriculture. And it said, if you come into my county without written permission and without a true bill, and you step one foot on any piece of property in this county, I will arrest your officers and impound your vehicles. Um, so let your friends know at the DOJ that the same thing goes for them. People don't realize how much courage it takes for, an, for a sheriff to stand up against both federal and or state government. Um, and they're going to pull all the dirty tricks they can. I mean, look what happened to Trump with all these ridiculous trials. So you know that's what the sheriff's going to go through. So there was a few nights Brad didn't sleep very well, for sure. And uh, a week later, the farmer received a letter from the DOJ that said that the uh, grand jury had been canceled and they were leaving. Leaving. You know, Brad had a lot of courage in doing that. Um, we've had, uh, there's many examples, of, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> many examples of how CSPOA or constitutional sheriffs have stood up against both state and, and federal government. Um, we had a sheriff down in, uh, I believe it's Liberty uh, County, Florida, and uh, uh, he had the same situation as far as the Second Amendment goes. Um, he didn't believe in a lot of the gun laws uh, that were placed on the people that were unconstitutional. And um, so he decided that his oath uh, was important to uphold with the Second Amendment. And so the officer uh, arrested the man. And so when the officer pulled him over and saw the gun on the seat, he arrested him uh, and took him to the jail. 